Hey, what's up DIYers, Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. We're working on a Mercruiser inboard outboard. And in today's video, we're going to show you how we replace our anodes. We just purchased a replacement kit. Let's get started. DIYers, here we are at the workstation. You can see the workbench on the other side of the jet ski over there. And in several of my recent videos, I have shared with you, this is my mom and dad's 2003 Sea-Doo GTX. And a special thanks to them for allowing me to bring it in-house to make a bunch of DIY repair videos for all of you. Let's hop to the workbench. Making our way around the jet ski. Hey, if you're into skateboarding, definitely check out the links down below in the comments section as well as the description section. We'll show you how to build your own custom logo skateboard and mount it on the wall. Here is our Alpha 1 Gen 1 outdrive stand. The outdrive was just previously installed back onto the boat. And at the tail end of this video, I will share with you what is going to go in this place now that the outdrive is gone. However, here is our Quicksilver anode kit. There's the part number, and this is the OEM one, and check that out. That is the old one we removed during the lower unit rebuild. And for your convenience, although we have already replaced this one, we are going to install this back on the boat and show you the full step-by-step -step guidance on how to replace all of your anodes. In our case, those are our four right there. If you got a Gen 2, you'll have additional anodes. And if you got the Bravos, you will have additional anodes as well. And coming up top, we have a magnesium kit, as you see here again. And magnesium anodes for fresh water use only. And you've got three different styles. You've got magnesium, aluminum, and zinc. And long story short, magnesium is for fresh water, zinc is for salt water, and the aluminum one is for both. In addition, DIYers, scrolling above right now is a link to a video where we give a full tutorial and rundown and explanation on the three different anodes. Again, magnesium, aluminum, and zinc. Definitely check that out. All right, DIYers, I just went out to the boat and removed the brand new anode. Check that out. What a big difference. This anode did its job in preventing the entire outdrive from corroding over the years. And I'm not sure if this is the original. It might be. Look at that. Inside the garage, let's go to the back of the boat. And here is our workstation. And if you have been with us the entire journey of our bell housing and bellows and outdrive rebuild and replacement projects, that's awesome. We really appreciate that. However, what we'll do is feed off the transom and we've got our transom, our gimbal ring, bell housing, and the outdrive. And we'll come inside here where the hydraulic lines off the trim ram feed into their hard mounted fittings. And we've got a lower bell housing anode down below. And then we've got one of these small ones on either side of the lower transom. And let me give you a better view of them. And DIYers, check that out. They have done their job. Look at that. And again, the main purpose of your anodes is to alleviate corrosion to your transom, gimbal ring, bell housing, and outdrive, and everything else that works in relation with the system out here. Or in other words, on the outside hull or rear portion of your boat. And again, as you can see, what a difference. I'm not sure if these are the originals, but we are going to replace them. And coming to the back of the outdrive, just above the propeller, and underneath there is your cavitational plate anode. Check that out. Again, doesn't owe us anything. It has done its job. Basically, no corrosion on the outdrive itself. Some missing paint, some pitting, but that's okay. No large sections of the outdrive or skag just falling off because it's so brittle and corroded. Because again, the anodes did their job. And we are going to start with the cavitational plate anode. We're going to come up top. We're going to position the camera and remove this little plastic plug to gain access to the inner bolt that holds and secures the cavitational plate anode in place. All right, DIYers, I have the camera positioned. We are looking at starboard side of the outdrive. And to this little plastic plug here, we are going to carefully remove it. And it should come off pretty easily. And there is a close-up view of that little plug. And we bought a brand new one when we were doing the upper unit rebuild because the old one, well, it was in really, really bad shape. Set this in a safe location and we now have access to insert a 3 8 hex key or Allen into that little slot there. And here is the tool I am using. 
Again, 3 8 as you see right there. It may take about five to 10 seconds to align your tool with the inner bolt. Just be patient. It's kind of at an angle, but once you get it in, you can begin turning it. There we go. I am in and turning it counterclockwise to loosen it. In our case, ours is already a bit loose because we just reinstalled the old one. However, what I recommend, come down below and grab the lower anode, and as you turn the bolt counterclockwise, the anode will begin to loosen and you can remove it. And there it is. And again, we replaced this in previous videos during our lower unit rebuild. What a difference from the new one. Look at that. Next, go down below and inspect the entire mating surface that the new anode will mate up against and remove as much debris and corrosion as you can. And in our case, we did this during the rebuild of the lower unit, so ours is clean. But I'm just knocking off any dust that has accumulated. Next, go ahead and grab your brand new anode. And in our case, again, we operate in fresh water and we chose magnesium. And I highly recommend if you are operating in fresh water, purchase the magnesium anode kit as opposed to the aluminum kit. Again, magnesium is what we recommend. And the way this is going to be installed is I'm going to position it in a way as shown here down below and simultaneously turn the bolt clockwise now. And DIYers do not cross thread the bolt into your new anode, that would not be good. And once you align the thread, it should screw in extremely easily. If it's not, go ahead and turn it counterclockwise, back out the thread, reset the thread, and begin turning it clockwise again. And as you tighten this, what I'm doing with my left hand down below is I'm ensuring that the anode itself is being guided up and into its insert and not crooked. And you want it snug, but do not over tighten it. And if all looks good, go ahead and reinsert and secure your plastic cap or plug into a close up view of that plug. And coming down below to our brand new installed anode. And verify that the propeller clears it both reverse and forward and there is a large gap in between. So that propeller is not going to strike the anode and destroy it. We are now moving inward toward the hull of the boat and again down below is the larger bell housing anode and just above that on both starboard side and port side you have these little rounded anodes for the transom plate itself and Go ahead and grab an adjustable wrench and measure it up to the flat surfaces of the anode and counterclockwise turn to loosen them. And go slow, no need to rush this part. And if you're lucky, just breaking it free, you might be able to loosen it by hand, which I can. And it's coming off pretty nicely. And even though it's old and being replaced, try not to drop it and make a mess. There it is. Look at that. And again, it did its job. I'll set that aside. And extremely important, you have a rubber seal or gasket here. Go ahead and carefully pull that off. The new kit comes with new seals. Or, other case, rubber washers. Next, extremely important, go ahead and clean off any dust, debris, corrosion, grime, any oil, or anything that has made any contact with the threaded stud and intermating washer. And if all looks good, we will grab our brand new anode, and you can see the little flat spots engineered into the anodes themselves for allowing the wrench to get in place and loosen and tighten it. And check this out. Magnesium anode stop, fresh water use only. And all that is is a sticker. We will remove that now. And there it is. However, before we install that, we need to install our brand new rubber washer on the threaded stud, as shown there. And back to the anode, and as you install this and turn it clockwise to secure it, do not cross thread it. Again, if you've got the thread lined up perfectly, it should screw on extremely easily, as shown here. Hand tight, 
followed by the adjustable wrench, and do not over tighten these, but you want them snug. And that is on there and secured. What we'll do is hop to port side and perform the exact same steps on removing the anode on the port side lower point of the transom. Remove the rubber washer, followed by cleaning the stud of any debris and corrosion or dust and installing and securing our brand new anode. And we did just that. We're now port side and looking at the bottom portion of the transom. And there it is, the brand new installed anode. And again, follow the exact same steps as the starboard side. We are now going to reposition the camera and direct our attention to the bell housing anode and remove and replace that. And DIYers, I now have the camera positioned in a way where we got a really good view of the bell housing anode. And again, it's on the lower portion of the transom. And your starboard side trim ram hydraulic lines, as well as port side, feed into the hard mounted fittings, which are not actually part of the anode itself. So when we remove this anode, you will notice when we pull it off, the hydraulic lines don't move, nor will we have to direct any attention to those. However, as you remove and install the new one, do your absolute best not to harm the fittings or the hydraulic lines on either side. Next, I grab my Craftsman 3 8 ratchet and I've got a 7 16 socket. On the very bottom, you've got two 7 16 bolts. We are going to carefully remove those. And the new kit comes with two new bolts. And they're about an inch and a half long. There it is. And on the very bottom side, you can see the gasket and just verify that the gasket is removed as a whole. Or in your case, if you've got half of it ripped off and stuck to the inner portion of the anode and the other half is stuck up top, go ahead and verify that you get all of the old gasket off the mating surface. And from here, just start cleaning up everything and preparing this mating surface for the brand new anode and gasket to be installed. And DIYers in front of us now is the old cavitational plate anode and the two lower transom anodes and the old bell housing anode we just removed with the gasket and those two 7 16 bolts. And on the right hand side you see our brand new bell housing anode as well as the brand new gasket and the two brand new bolts. And what I am going to do is basically rest the gasket in line with the holes and verify that the mating surfaces are clean. And I'm going to come up from below with a bolt, as shown here on both sides. And when we reinstall this, that is how it's going to look. And as you can see, the comparison between the old and new, what a significant difference. And as I've mentioned a few times already in this video, the entire old anode kit did its job over the 30 years of this boat's existence. Yes, there is missing paint on the outdrive and some scuffs and scrapes, as well as pitting, but there's hardly little or no corrosion. Camera back in position to view the lower portion of the transom to install this brand new anode. And... Make sure you install it properly. The rounded portion here will be facing the outdrive or closest to the outdrive. In other words, farthest away from the hull. And as always, do not cross thread these bolts into the inserts and verify that you have your gasket in place as you secure this up and onto the lower transom. And I'm just going to begin hand tightening that one for starters. Followed by this one up and in, ensuring that my gasket is properly aligned, which it is. Now to a close up, and again, I'm just ensuring that the gasket itself is properly positioned and the threaded bolt on both starboard side and port side are going through the hole of the gasket. If you do not seat this gasket properly, where both of the bolts go through the gasket and into their respective inserts to be secured, the anodes will not operate as designed, and that's not what you want. And again, this is starboard side. Now let's head to port side to verify that that bolt is through the gasket hole. Here we are port side coming in and check that out. As you can see, both of our 7 16 bolts are going through the respective holes of the gasket and into their inserts up top. It is now safe to secure both of our 7 16 bolts.
And again, all I'm going to do is hand tighten them first in sequence. And I want to properly seat and set the gasket. And by tightening them in sequence, in other words, not tightening this bolt all the way until it's tight and then tightening this bolt, I'm tightening this one about 10 turns and then this one 10 turns until it's hand tight. We can now grab a ratchet and socket and secure them. Five turns on that one. Five turns on that one. And as always, do not over tighten these. You could actually crack your anode and that's not what you want. And at this point DIYers, just double check everything to ensure all bolts are secured and the anodes are properly aligned and set. And from here, as I mentioned before, in the event that you have an Alpha Gen 2 or the Bravos, you have an additional anode on this portion of your outdrive. And I believe you've got the exact same 7 16 bolts. Go ahead and loosen them up and remove them and pull the old anode plate off and install the new one. In a quick reposition of the camera, we are now back to looking at the cavitational plate anode and DIYers. In the event that you are curious why we did not replace our bolt inside here with the brand new bolt that came in the kit and packaging, well, I'll tell you that now. During the entire upper unit and lower unit and outdrive rebuild, we did actually replace that bolt. So our brand new bolt that came with the kit is just an extra. Taking a step back in DIYers, that is it. Again, the step-by-step -step process on how to properly and safely replace your entire set of anodes. And we hope this helps. And what we'll do now is head back inside to the workbench because I want to show you what is filling the slot or spot where the outdrive sat on the stand as it patiently waited for us to replace all of the bellows, shift cable, water tube, and more inside the bell housing and transom. Let's go inside and take a look. Here we are back inside to the workstation. And as promised, Something has already filled the slot that the outdrive was removed from. And this is a 1996 Dino Air GT. With the famous GT mag wheels and gum wall ring tires. And we are going to clean it up, basically strip the decals, have a company re-chrome the entire frame, handlebars, fork, etc. And we're going to rebuild it. All brand new decals clean polished chrome and more and we'll post a link down below in the comment section as well as the description section for that in addition we have already cleaned up our 1996 dino vfr we'll also post that link down below we're excited about that projects never end